Moving on to another interesting game. All these are interesting, but this one's particularly interesting. Just in the market. We have Fresno State at Purdue. Purdue's only a three and a half point favorite at home with an over under of 48 points. Kicks off at noon on the Big Ten Network. Body clock alert, guys. This is I love talking about this. Fresno State is backing up three time zones and playing at 9 a.m. local because uh, it's noon Eastern. So they're playing at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, that, that's interesting. I love fading teams in those spots that have to go in and play in the early mornings, especially when you're flying in. Geez, they're probably flying in today. So they're only going to have a couple of days, maybe tomorrow. They are only going to have a couple of days to adjust there. The over-under has been bet way down from its initial standing at 54.5 points. Again, like I said, now at 48. Fresno State has also taken all the action on the spread. Uh, they stayed, uh, Purdue stayed steady at minus 6.5 for most of the offseason, but that has dropped uh, particularly late. Again, all the way down to 3.5 I'm seeing here. Maybe some 4.5s are still out there. I like the Mikey Keene fit. He comes over from UCF quarterback with Fresno State. I think it's a better situation for him. Uh, he's five foot eleven, about 200 pounds. They want him to run the ball a lot in UCF because that's what Gus Malzahn demands of his quarterbacks. He's not going to have to do that as much as Fresno State. I think that's a better situation. But as far as I know, he's not Jay Kaner. Uh, we saw Fresno State without Jay Kaner. Not, not great. Uh, they return just 57% of their total roster production. None of their top three receivers, including Jalen Cropper, is a beast, uh, or a 1,000-yard running back. Those guys are all gone. On the other side, Purdue has uh, Hudson Card, who I maintain is, is a very talented quarterback. Uh, that was in a tough situation at Texas. Graham Harrell comes in as offensive coordinator. He's exciting. I've seen a lot of excitement around that hire, but he's been kind of disappointing numbers-wise at USC, West Virginia, uh, his other stops that he's been at. But you could have a worse offensive coordinator hire, in my opinion. I thought this number looked weird, but then I looked and the aggregated power ratings I used to handicap here make Purdue minus four. So, you know, what do you make of it? Yeah, this is my number one game in the early window, Brett, which again, you know, Fresno State, Purdue, you wouldn't think so. But I think this game is, is sneaky good and a little under the radar. I have Purdue minus six, which is a 67% win expectancy. Uh, Purdue, for me, is power rated number 53. Fresno State is number 66. It's an interesting game uh, for me because it's strength versus strength. It should be very even between Fresno State's number 43 defense and Purdue's number 48 offense. The difference for me here is Purdue's number 58 defense against Fresno State's number 72 offense, plus this game is in West Lafayette. You know, traveling is, is hard enough. Playing on the road is hard enough. I always talk about that's the hardest thing to do in college football is win on the road. You add in a three three time zone difference and a 9 a.m. local kick, it makes it even more difficult now for Fresno State from those perspectives. Uh, from a scheduling standpoint, it's not nothing that Purdue is traveling to Blacksburg next week to take on Virginia Tech. I, I do think the Boilers are going to be focused on the task at hand. If I look at my numbers for Fresno State and Virginia Tech, they're actually very similar. Of course, for Purdue's standpoint, one's at home and one's on the road. Um, but Virginia Tech really not that much better, if at all, than Fresno State this year. So I don't think the Boilers are going to be looking ahead. Um, this is Ryan Walter's first game as the head coach. I think they will be focused and dialed in. Bottom line, Purdue minus six at home with a 67% win expectancy for the Boilers. I, I have to mention that Phil Steele in his projection magazine, again, really, really solid with his numbers, projects Purdue last in the Big Ten. That's behind Northwestern. Now, I do have to note that was before the, the Pat Fitzgerald firing, but still, the fact that he was anticipating Purdue to be a potential two- or three-win team this year, I'm not sure I'm that low on them. I, I, I think that's, that's a bit of a – it was a shock for me, uh, for sure, You know, popping that open in, in June or July and, and seeing Purdue projected last – uh, they do return, the Boilermakers do return Devin Mockaby at uh, running back. He was nearly a 1,000-yard rusher as a true freshman in uh, 2022. I like him a lot. Fresno State, not great versus the run last year. I know that was last year's numbers, 90th in EPA. But they do return six of their front seven. Now, that can aid in progression to, to help them improve. But at the same time, if you're returning pretty much all the same guys on a defense that was 90th in rush EPA, I don't have a lot of confidence that you're going to improve all that much. So I think Purdue should be able to uh, maintain the game on the ground there. Like you said, Ryan Walters, debut as a head coach with Purdue. Uh, if we can find minus three, if this thing crashes all the way down to, to, to minus three, I'm all about Purdue. Uh, body clock, like you said, it's at home, uh, you know, power five versus group five. And we talked about it in the preseason that Fresno State is ranked fairly low. Like they're rated pretty low, but they have a very favorable strength of schedule that may aid to more wins. And I don't know, maybe people are looking at their projected wins for the year and saying, well, I think Fresno State's supposed to be pretty good. So I'll bet them on the road against Purdue. That's turning a lot over. But I don't think I'm at that point. 
I may take that three and a half. If a three doesn't show, I have not yet. I'm, I'm going to be patient and see if we can't get three because uh, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, those are some dead numbers. So you have a little bit of a ability to be patient here. But yeah, I, I think I'm on the Purdue side on this one.